moving on. This is something I'm I'm very <laughs> very excited. Uh, I I've been waiting to talk about this for well I wanted to talk about this yesterday obviously but um, so Ron DeSantis or somebody that I have named Ron Dick Santis because he's a dick uh, <laughs> has come out with a series of fascistic education bills and I mean there's the, like you can't tell me that they're not it's the people who are gonna be like oh well. Like, no, these are fascistic fucking education bills. Um, so he came out basically like, and he's been putting a bunch of them, right? He had like an anti-riot law that was basically like criminalizing protesting. His anti-riot law was basically saying, hey, if you protest, uh, we can throw you in prison. That's the law. That's the whole law. Oh, if you if you uh oh one of the things in there was if you um if you block a highway or a street and somebody hits you with your car it, it hits you with their car they're it, within legal reason to commit vehicular manslaughter. You're blocking the street. You're mildly inconveniencing them. So the appropriate reaction is vehicular manslaughter. That's part of the law. You're a psycho. You wrote a murder law. That's all you legalized murdering protesters. Democracy. <laughs> People voted for this guy. People were like Ron DeSantis. That's the guy, man. The murder law guy. I want the I want the murder. Can how many more murder laws can you write? So he came out when he cited this law. He denounced Cuba and Nicaragua, and he asked the question, why would they swim through across shark-infested waters? Oh, I don't know, because of American economic sanctions and constant American intervention that keeps fucking with their country and fucking with their economy? Yeah, let's just pretend that that's not a thing. Let's just pretend that America doesn't impose sanctions uh, on countries that are able to provide them with social services that actually benefit the people. And then you attack them, so they can't provide them these social services and then go, oh, look at the poverty. Look at the people suffering. It's like, motherfucker, you guys caused that. But let's ignore it. If Ron DeSantis actually engages with reality, his brain might melt. Okay, guys, he's just protecting his brain. Also, what's what's... Funny is, isn't the way that immigrants enter this country been like this huge talking point against immigration for Republicans? So why would you use that? <laughs> but that excuse is only valid. It's like, oh, they're leaving the country and they're trying to come in here illegally because socialism. Mm? Fuck no. They're leaving the country because of capitalist economic sanctions. And then you demonize them for it. Unless you need to demonize socialism, then you use immigrants as a scapegoat for it. Then, then he goes, some teachers, uh, some teachers teach things about positive things about Mao and Che. Oh, should we rather be praising warmongering psychopaths like Nixon and Reagan and Clinton and Obama? and Trump, and Biden, and the Bush family? Should should we be championing those people instead? Instead of freedom fighters? And then he goes on to say... <laughs> this was hilarious. And then he goes on to say that teaching people about Che and Mao, uh, you know, uh, uh, a, a, a person of Latin, uh, South American descent, or Latin American descent, uh, and a Asian person from China uh, is whitewashing history. <laughs> I don't think Ron DeSantis knows what whitewashing is. <laughs> yeah, he called teaching people about Che Guevara. A brown person is whitewashing history. Teaching people about Mao Zedong, a, a Chinese person, is whitewashing history. You know what is whitewashing history? Saying that George Washington dropped out a cherry tree. <laughs> Claiming that he can't lie. That never fucking happened. You just made that shit up. 
Oh, by saying that Americans were here to help the Native Americans and ignoring the slaughter of the people. That's whitewashing history. Ignoring the Tulsa race massacre. That's whitewashing history. Ignoring the history of the Black Panthers and the Civil Rights Movement. That's whitewashing history. Oh, not teaching people that Martin Luther King Jr. was a socialist, an anti-war socialist, and that's why the FBI fucking murdered him. That's whitewashing history. Claiming that teaching people about Che Guevara and Mao Zedong is whitewashing history is fucking whitewashing history. So here's one of the things, some of the things is the lost states. It says that K through 12 need portraits in patriotism. Uh, okay, so if we're gonna if we're gonna talk about patriots, right? Uh, I guess I guess that means that there are gonna be uh, lessons from uh, about uh, Eugene Debs, about uh, Mother Jones, about people like Mike Gravel who recently passed away, uh, Fred Hampton, perhaps uh, the Black Panther Party. You guys are going to teach them about, about patriots like that or the rank and file of the Black Panther Party. Emma Goldman, that's a patriot. What about uh, Malcolm X? What about JFK? What about Bobby Kennedy? We're going to learn about those people? We're going to learn about the truth about those people, rather. You going to talk about how JFK wanted to end the Cold War by having a meeting with Khrushchev? And he fired Alan Dulles? Those are portraits in patriotism, or is it just going to be, you know, uh, a jack off session where you guys talk about how cool Richard Nixon was and how drugs are bad? Drugs are bad, kids. Don't do them. They might open your mind to the evils of capitalism. Oh, no, you're not going to teach them about. Eugene Debs or Mike Gravel or Fred Hampton or JFK or Bobby Kennedy? Oh, you're not? Oh, then I don't think you understand what the word portrait or patriotism actually fucking means. Then what he wants is first-person accounts of people affected by communism. Uh, and I think that's fine as long as we also have first-person accounts of people whose lives have been ruined by capitalism. And hey... I'll fucking volunteer to come down to Florida and fucking give a speech at a high school about about how people have been fucked over by capitalism, including myself. Happy to fucking do it. But if you're not, if you're not, then that's a double standard. And if you're only going to sit there and say communism and socialism kill people, which they don't that much. And you ignore the fact that capitalism causes more suffering and pain and poverty in this world. That's called propaganda. You're teaching children propaganda. You're teaching children McCarthyist propaganda. And you're doing it blatantly and outright. And if parents are okay with it, then, you know, what's the difference between you and Nazi Germany that we're teaching kids that Jews were evil? It's authoritarian, fascistic propaganda. That's what he wants kids to learn. First-person accounts and portraits and patriotism. And then high school and college kids have to pass a civic literacy test. What the fuck does that mean? Civic literacy? Is that a patriotism test? How many how how far uh can Uncle Sam jam his dick down your throat? Is that part of the test? Cuz that's pretty much what it sounds like to me. Here's where things go crazy with this. Teachers and students have to register their political beliefs. <laughs> they have to register their political beliefs. Teachers and students. Teachers and students have to register. Are they going to get little yellow stars if they register as a particular group of people that you don't like? And then are you going to put them all on trains and, and move them to something you'd like to call camps? Ron, uh, why is Ron DeSantis still allowed to be the governor of Florida? It, I mean, this is blatant fascism. <laughs> and you know there are going to be people that are like, yeah, okay, that makes sense. I'd like to know. I'd like to know.
And then if it's an ide ideology that they're not fond of, then they're eligible to lose their funding. They're eligible to lose their funding. How is that fair? It's not. So you have to believe a certain thing in order to get funding to do the thing that you're not allowed to do because if you do that thing, you lose funding. So you're just not allowed to be a socialist in this country. I mean, how many fucking laws do they need to throw out there for people to start being like, yeah, this, this administration is no different than the last one. And then there's people that back uh, DeSantis, and DeSantis himself, I, I believe, also said public universities are, quote, socialism factories. Well, great, because people in those factories uh, are paid a living wage. They get health care. They get maternity and paternity leave. They get paid sick leave. They, they don't. Like, yeah, I hope they're socialism factories because that means that people are actually going to be treated like people. Uh, there was a lobbyist by the name of Barney Bishop, uh, and he claims that education leans towards, quote, liberal ideologies and secularism. And then he claims that that's not what this country was founded on. Uh... I don't know if you've heard, Barney, but America is a secular nation. That's literally exactly the thing that we're founded on, is secularism. America is not a Christian nation. It's not. They'd like to tell you that it is. I mean, the GOP would love to, uh, to, to, to brag about, you know, being a Christian nation. But we're not a fucking Christian nation. This is a secular nation, so you should teach secular ideologies, right? And part of secularism is learning about other religions, not preaching them. Secularism also has uh, critical thinking and problem solving as part of it. If you're not going to teach critical thinking, all you're doing is telling people what they can think and what they can believe. And that's called fascism. That doesn't, you don't have, you're not giving people freedom of anything. So Ron DeSantis is a fascist. And he's proving it. He wrote a, he wrote a riot, quote, anti-riot bill that just lets you murder people on the streets. Because they're mildly inconveniencing you. Really? One of the streets is blocked? You, you don't want to, you don't. There's no detour that you learned about. Liberal ideologies. Eh. I mean, liberalism is. Some, some colleges probably do believe in, in liberalism. But, you know, go to something like Liberty University. That's a conservative college. Are they going to teach you Karl Marx in an objective way? Probably not. What they will tell you is people like the Rockefellers. Uh, and I believe the Rockefellers. Yeah, John D. Rockefeller is a, is a, is a great person, uh, but John D. Rockefeller sold American Standard Oil to the Nazis. Oh, gee, why would a great person do that? Oh, it's because he doesn't give a shit and doesn't actually have an ideology as long as he can fucking make money. So he exploits people. You're, are you going to teach them the accurate hit? No, you're not. Liberty College has a conservative bent to things. I mean, the way the education system runs is flawed. It is. It does have. But if you but if you accurately teach history, I'll 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 kind of frame my comment of this. If you teach accurate history, it does have a leftist bend because it just shows you how people in power have oppressed people like the the working class of the world nonstop. That's a trend you see all the time. <laughs> like the education system is. Is is highly corrupted. You, you, I mean, in my and and I had and I'm not saying teachers are bad, right? Like this is not me saying teachers. Are, I've had some great teachers who have helped me think critically. 
uh, who have like gone above and beyond the call of duty to fucking teach kids, you know, some things in history that aren't in the history books. I've had, I've had plenty of teachers that like that. And those teachers are great, but, but a lot of times those teachers get in trouble for doing that. They get in trouble for veering away from what is, um, what is acceptable to be taught. I didn't, I didn't learn about scripts and company towns and, and the battle for Blair mountain. I didn't learn about the general strikes in Toledo and North Carolina and San Francisco and Seattle I didn't learn about the Boston police strike. I learned all that stuff on my own. Because the way shit was working and the way that I've been told it's it works didn't add up. So I did my own digging and enlightened myself. Or I talked to average people that have enlightened themselves that lead me down a, you know the, the to different paths to learn new things. So, I mean, there is a lot of patriotism and, and all that kind of crap in American education, but this is going above and beyond that, though. You know, this is going above and beyond just, oh, our, America's the greatest country in the world. Okay, but it doesn't sound like it. Yeah, but we are. You know, this goes into, here's this manufactured history we're going to create under portraits of patriotism, and then we're going to bring in real people uh, and talk about how evil communism and socialism is. Now, there's a difference between communism and socialism and authoritarianism. I mean, you can have capitalists that are authoritarians, i.e. United States from the dawn of its inception. This is like insane that this bill exists. I'm going to look at you, some of your comments. Zozovix over on Rockfin. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, I'd say deeper than balls deep. Even Lincoln disavowed the Christian Bible. And Lincoln was a Marxist. Uh, not fully, but he he embraced Marx. He, he learned from Marx. He actually talked about uh, Marxist ideology and Marxist principles. In fact, when the when the Republican Party was created, they were kind of socialist farmers. Like they wanted to build up um, agriculture and, and small agriculture and like use government um, social programs to help them out. Like he was he was actually not like the Republican Party is nowhere close to what it was when you know Lincoln was running for office. Uh, just I guess he read too much. Yes, he did. He read a little too much Marx. <laughs> um, you know, and and Marx was Marx was a little critical of of Lincoln too. Not that Lincoln was perfect. Lincoln also sold out the state of West Virginia to private interests, um, and and that's why that's that that led West Virginia down the path that we have we we see West Virginia heading down now, right? Uh, so yeah. Uh, over on Facebook, uh, I know some folks get Mark Viola is a, is a, a very funny comedian. And what he's saying is, is, is tongue in cheek. Uh, Ron DeSantis perfectly represents 52% of the Florida population. That isn't a disenfranchised felon. Yeah. Because he doesn't represent anybody that's would, would have been a felon and felons are disenfranchised. So Mark, Mark's, Mark's making some tongue in cheeks comments. Uh, Brian, thank you for joining the stream. Uh, he says he's basically saying America wasn't founded on education or learning anything. Yes, exactly. That's that's pretty much what uh, what's this guy's name? Barney Bishop is saying. Um, Brian also says, uh, doesn't Florida mandate IGWT be displayed in every classroom? What is IGWT? I don't think I've heard that before. Uh Mark Viola says, uh, as someone who did 12 years hard labor in the Florida public education system, what DeSantis is pushing isn't far from how it has already been. Yeah, well, now no one can criticize it. And and I would say it it you're you're right 
but it's also taking um taking a next step. I think this is like the next step and I don't remember them blatantly coming out and saying communism bad, so you know, a capitalism good. It was implied that you know that that's uh that's what it is, but uh I don't think it basically like this this education system that he's preaching is basically uh like teaching McCarthyist principles and teaching like the glory of capitalism be upon thee, like that sort of shit. Um, but you're right. I mean, it's it's just kind of taking the next step to that. Uh, oh, in God we trust. In God we trust. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I I I went to school, and that was, uh, I believe that was uh, a thing that they put up in God we trust, which is like which God. I by the time I was 15, I, I by the time I was 15, I was uh, I was very atheist. So, um, yeah. It, 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 it's bizarre like in a, in a secular environment where there's a separation of religions uh, state or church and state you you still like the pledge of allegiance for example it's like why would someone like me need to we're pledging allegiance to a piece of fucking cloth but again that's part of his thing that's part of his thing so uh mark says they 100 percent did my ap us teacher Needed to sneak in copies of Zinn's People History for us to read. Plenty of Adam Smith, though. Did did, did you really have a? I, I didn't know you had a, like they did anti-communist stuff. Uh, we learned. I mean, we learned about communism, but it was always like in theory, communism works kind of thing. Um, and that's kind of what was taught to us. But we never came out and just said like, if you're a communist, you're straight up evil, and you're you know, a, a treasonous traitor, commie, pinko, liberal bastard. Like, we never went down that route. We talked about McCarthyism a little bit. Um, I remember I remember that being brought up, and they were like, oh, yeah, a lot of people were, like, uh, hunted down, and there were these trials, and da-da-da-da, and then we just kind of moved on to... And then Dwight Eisenhower was no longer president. Oh, and then JFK happened, we landed on the moon, and then he died. Uh, it's like, how'd he die? Don't worry about it. <laughs> you know, why did he die? Also, don't worry. His head exploded probably because there was, uh, uh, there, there may or may not have been communism implanted into his brain that, uh, exploded. That, that could have been, uh, you don't know. You're a dumb kid. Don't question authority. And that, like, that's, <laughs> that's the way things go. Uh, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's crazy that they they went down that whole McCarthyist route in your education system. Uh, I didn't even know Zinn's people history was a thing until I got to college. But Adam Smith was somebody that we talked about uh, a, a bunch um, and in the history books. <laughs> uh, they talk about Adam Smith as, as pretty cool. Brian says, we talked about McCarthyism as some sort of lesson about overbearing government. That's kind of the way they talk about it. Uh, but very vaguely, right? Like, very vaguely do they be like, oh, this is a government going too far. Um, Mark, nope. Uh, Florida public schools vehemently taught communism was evil. My world history class in 2001 had one map up on the wall and it still said USSR on what that's fucking crazy dude i did not know that that's what was going on i i i'm i would be curious to know which states teach that um mark, mark actually pointed out uh, i did a i did a, a a show probably a number of years ago at this point um about how texas controls what goes into uh into textbooks because they purchase such a large volume and then they disperse that out to states like Mississippi and Alabama and Oklahoma and stuff like that. Um, I would be very curious to know, you know, what states are learning that. Because for us, I, I remember they talk about communism and they vaguely address like, well, it wouldn't work in America. Uh, and yeah, oh man, look at all these people. They, they you know, under communist Russia... Uh, they were having a hard time and they were going through the this famine and that thing and uh, you know they they couldn't afford this that and the third and that's how it was taught to us 
but never like, oh, communism is super evil and it kills people. Like that came later. That th that rhetoric I heard much later. That's crazy that you were straight up th th taught that. That's that's bonkers as hell, dude. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you hit the like button and please make sure you share this content out. Sharing is very important. Sharing is how independent media gets the word out there about topics that corporate media doesn't even want to mention on their networks. So it's really up to you guys. Corporate media very much depends on the people. We are people powered media. That's what we really are. Uh, another great way to help if you're on stable financial ground is to uh, make a financial contribution to this channel. And you can do so over at krishmohanhaha.com slash donate. You can become a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets, early access to videos, bonus stand-up comedy and storytelling content, uh, a way for you to communicate directly with me, ask me questions, and other uh, premium content that uh, will be released on a monthly basis. Um, or you can make a one-time donation as well on that same website. Um, I also have uh, various stand-up comedy albums. I have about six comedy albums out right now uh, that are available on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. And most of them, if you get them off of Bandcamp, are available for a dollar or a, a pay-what-you-want pricing. And I also want to mention that I do have an online merch store. Uh, you can go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com, click on the merch tab, and check out all of the designs that I've made myself. And the Julian Assange shirt, there is a Julian Assange shirt that's on the website. All the profit from the Julian Assange designs will be going to uh, pro-Assange activists, such as Action for Assange, uh, Kevin Gastola, Richard Methurst, folks uh, 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 that, that are covering and talking about Assange. So I'm going to be making donations to them. Um, uh, it'll be 100% of the profits I make off of that shirt. Uh, thank you again for tuning in. Thank you again to all the people that have made contributions to the show, that regularly check out my content, that have subscribed to my channels. I, I very, very much appreciate it, and uh, and you guys help keep this uh, keep keep this this train a moving. So I, I very much appreciate that. Until the next video, we'll see you on the road. See you guys.